please give an incredible warm round of applause again to the Mayor of Vilnius, Rimigius Shamashis. I don't know where did she get all these achievements because yes, uh, they're small in comparison to what we actually do. But, but uh, I'm very glad to talk about the main topic today and to, to, to open up this uh, kind of uh, already talks. My topic is how to stay young forever, which is uh, unrealistic, but quite realistic as well when speaking for the city. And of course, one of the answers could be you have to have friends because typically young people have a lot of friends and we have friends here, we have friends and distantly, but, but that's, that's, that's uh, of course not enough. Uh, you would excuse me, I think, if, if I'll go back a little bit. <laughs> a little bit to where we are and who we are. And we, they, we like to define ourselves by the term, the fortress of freedom. The fortress, the bastion of freedom, which is very relevant today as well. It was relevant a long time ago because we ourselves, we had the history of several hundred years worse with Russia, so it's not a surprise today what we have. Uh, you see a little distortion in the, in, the, in the border between Mordor and the free world. It means that Belarus has to be in, in the, on the left-hand side from, from here. Uh, this was, was our country, our joint country for so long. But Vilnius was always a fortress of freedom. It was perceived as a fortress of freedom. And you know, when the uprisals from, from, from uh, Lithuania against Russia, they called themselves that who is Lithuanian? Self-description of Lithuanian is that Lithuanian is the one who loves freedom and obeys the statute, or the, the rule of law. This is the self-definition of us. This is the, the letter. This is the letter, the excerpt from the letter. This is a nice letter. I told about it, so I will not, not talk about it uh, anymore. But we had Middle Ages like most of the cities had, with ups and downs, with prosperity, trade, wars, plague, all the, all the things around. And we, 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 we had the golden times. Our golden times were like 16th century up to the middle of, of 17th century. Uh, the, the middle of, of, of uh, 16th century, we had our university established, which is the oldest one in, in, this, in, this, in this region, uh, and the most Eastern, uh, Western-style university for many, 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 many centuries. When we, when we occupied by Russia in a couple hundred years after, it didn't still have any university. So this was a single university in, in, this, in, this, in this huge country. Uh, so we had, we had basically a wonderful time for many years. We had anything but going back to the re more recent history, we had a very, very dr drastic and very, very sad events uh, through our occupation, first Soviet, then Nazi, and then Soviet again. When, when the mayor of, of Jerusalem told that we are Jerusalem of the North, it is the old self-description of Vilnius as well. Uh, we had 40% of our population Jewish before. We lost it. We had all the disruptions. Uh, I will not go into details about this. We also had some Soviet heaven donated to us. This is the city which was in the postcards as a very nice development. This was, this was the Soviet heaven. It's still, it's still here in Vilnius. I mean, we're still dealing with this. But this, this was the Soviet, Soviet donation. Uh, were we thirsty for freedom? Of course we were. That was one of these thousands of, of men standing against tanks uh, 32 years ago. Just looking a little bit back, we had very interesting stories from, I'm not talking about guerrilla war after World War II, but we have, for example, Jonas Pleschkis in 1961, who, was, uh, who, was, uh, who escaped to, to, to Sweden through the sea. Uh, if you saw the movie, The Hunt for Red October, so the story was based on, on, his, on his story. Then we had uh, Simas Kudirha, who actually, in the middle of the ocean, he jumped from Soviet ship to American ship. He jumped. I mean, can you imagine the ocean, the ships, and the man is jumping? So this was, this was the story. I mean, one of the most brilliant documentaries called The Jump, if you want to see it. Actually, the man in the picture is the actual man on the actual ship, American ship, he jumped on. 
He is still alive, lives in Lithuania now. He came back from US because he escaped uh, difficultly but, but nicely. Then we have the Vlada Shakalis, who went through Karelia, bypassing Finland, of course, to, to Sweden in order to escape this Mordor. And then we have, of course, Baltic Way. And, and, and at the end of the day, we, we basically we had a spark which destroyed Soviet Union with the help of it. <laughs> Thank you. The question, so, or and, what's next? I must remind that David was not uh, the best king in, 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 in Israel because he bet uh, Galliot, but because he was successful after he bet Galliot. So what we are doing after, what challenges do we have? And I want to show first uh, the single site which illustrates the, the history. The site is right in the when you leave the Philharmonic uh, house, it's right in front of you. You will recognize it easily. Uh, before World War uh, II, we had a nice building over there on the site. It was lively, it was live here. So during this time, it was German occupation, it was like uh, Fatim and so on. So, so it was not very rich times, but still, it was building, it was live. Then we had destruction during World War II. That's the picture from 1945. What Soviets did, of course, they destroyed it. Well, why to rebuild things? No, better to destroy, better, better to build this Soviet heaven. Then we have got independence. What we got? We got a nice parking lot in there. It looks like, you know, it's quite nice, you know, all this pavement, the street, cars already not so bad, <laughs> are, getting, are getting better. Looks like, looks like a good life, but is it life we actually do want, do we have to go further? And that's exactly what I'm talking, that after getting independence from Soviet Union 32 years ago, so what's next? So Moses was leading the nation for 40 years, so maybe we still have eight years in front of us to get rid of all the worst things we had, but yes, we are getting rid of that. And this place, how, how it looks now, it looks like this. It looks like this, uh, and I would like to share uh, one of these now and how things, because you see lots of people uh, like chilling, uh, drinking coffee around. This is actually the year when we were getting out of pandemic two years ago, and uh, we got known about this kind of Vilnius method when we declare that, yes, it's possible to have coffee outside, not inside, so let's declare Vilnius as a city as one big out outdoor cafe. And people immediately went out. This was the best year for all cafes in Vilnius. It was the reshaping of the public streets. I saw people, especially urbanists, crying that, you know, I was dreaming about this for so long. And this was a great inspiration on how you just have to open up and to provide freedom. And, of course, this is not just opening up for cafes. It was, it, it was changing of the, of the urban structure as well. But I think this is a good illustration of four different scenarios for the same place. It can be different. It depends on us. Even being 700 years old, it depends on us what we do. Are we successful as a city? Of course we are, but I will tell something, but of course we are struggling with some, some, some issues. Uh, first of all, we, we went from bankruptcy situation to prosperity. Uh, our like, salary growth during the this ten, last 10 years was more than two times. Our invest, foreign investment grew by, by 100%. Uh, our happiness index, everything is booming, one of the most successful places in Europe. Looking to details, we are the world champions for sharing economies, for car sharing in particular. I mean, when we calculated per capita, cars for sharing per capita, we are number one. Tiling is close. We are more or less competing all the time. There is a slight probability that for today, Thailand is even higher. <laughs> But I know exactly that in three weeks we will be high again. And <laughs> I, know, I, know, I, know, I know for sure it's a good competition to have. We are world champions and it didn't happen accidentally. It's not just wise business. We had to be inventive. We had to invent some rules, rules about parking, about is it possible to, leave, to go to a residence only zone, about, about all kinds of small, tiny invention that led to the situation when families are getting rid of the second car per family or even the first car per family 
because it's more convenient. And of course, it's, it's mm, very friendly to the environment. Not because, just because you have less trips, but you produce less cars. With less, you get the same. This is amazing. That's actually, that is what we mean by good life and saving the planet at the same time. Because what, if you are saving the planet by reducing the quality of your life, uh, it may work, but it's not fun. Better to have a good life and, and to save the planet. So if you, some of you are interested about this, this is a very interesting story. It's a very clear story how in six years we became a champion city for car sharing and in sharing as well. Our unicorns are also about sharing. Vinted's our, our first unicorn, is, is about, uh, about sharing, sharing as well. When Michael Bloomberg, former mayor of uh, New York City and the biggest philanthropist for the cities, uh, uh, declared a challenge, mayor's challenge after COVID, saying, you know, what are these cities which will get out of the COVID restrictions in the most progressive way with the new innovative ideas? I will give one million dollars to uh, all of these ideas to implement. Of course, we said, okay, we have to win this, and we won. <laughs> Uh, actually, 15 cities in the world got this prize out of more than 600 who participated. Our idea was simple, to solve the problem which exists in the Western world for around 150 years. It means how to change the behavior in the classroom. Because all we know that the education is the old style industrial time education. We need new things. What to do? We are thinking for more than 100 years what to do and no idea. We think that we've got one idea, which is very important. Our goal is to get the children out of the school if we understand school as a building. Our goal is to have at least 10% of our lessons outside of the school buildings in the city. We think that the school is not the building, but it's the process of learning together. What does it mean? We, it means that we are creating Netflix of classes, or Airbnb of, 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 of lessons, how, how would you name it? It means that we already started with this. We won this one a year ago. Uh, last week we started with a, with, a, with a portal already. And if a teacher wants to bring children uh, outside of the school, they had plenty of opportunities and it's, it's gone. For example, with, this, with these lessons which we have now, for example, how not to get lost in the city. I don't know for, for what kind of, uh, for, for how old children this is. Or uh, the waste basketball. Okay, this sounds interesting. Or the hunting for new words in Calvario market. Okay, that is very interesting. This, I know this is an English lesson for third year primary school children. I, I would like to go there <laughs> to, to know how, how, how to call a beet trim or cat, carrot or potato or so on. I think it's, it's just a wonderful idea. So our goal is to have at least 10% of all lessons outside in the city, and we are going, uh, going to reach this target. Uh, in the service, we are one of the happiest cities, but actually it's very difficult to know how we got it, so, so I'll not, not, not stay in this very, very long. It's, it's, it's something about the spirit, about the freedom spirit, I think, in, 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 in the city. Uh, with a nice investment, uh, good investment surrounding by Financial Times, we are selected for three times in a row uh, as a city having the best foreign direct investment attraction strategy. This is, this is a nice uh, title, but we, have, but we have also the consequences of this, which means that new good businesses are going to the market. Ten years ago, the biggest business in Lithuania and in Vilnius, it was the same, it was Maxima, a huge retail, retail chain. Now, Maxima didn't get smaller, it grew. But the biggest business in Lithuania and in Vilnius is Thermo Fisher Scientific, which is biotech company. I mean, biotech business is the biggest business or the biggest value in Vilnius. And if I would have a prognosis right to draw what will be in eight years, I have no doubts, okay, 90% sure, that the biggest business in eight, uh, eight years will be Teltonica, which is the first business in Europe to produce lusts because we are the first ones to get this technology from Taiwan. Just last week the agreement was signed and it is clear that we estimate that it will be around 5% of our GDP just from this investment of, of, of lust uh, production. Going back to the city, I talked about this location in front of the you know, Philharmonic House. Uh, 
I was struggling as a mayor for years and years how to make the city fast developing, to have a good supply for new buildings, for living and for everything, and have good quality at the same time. Two or three years ago, we managed to reach the understanding how we must act. This is both legal innovation, because it's not law, it's, it's kind of soft law, and urban innovation as well. Our 10 principles of quality architecture in Vilnius, it started to work, and if you look to new developments, it's just beautiful because we know exactly what we want to have, and it's not 600 pages, it's one postcard. And of course, it, it, it is explained in the more details, but we know how to do it, how to have a nice ground floors, how to have uh, lively streets, and have to have cozy and safe uh, yards, and how to, to, have, to encourage uh, natural materials and local materials. It's all about our invention, and you know, it looks very easy when you show it, but um, I will be very open. I've never seen any other city which does have it in a, in a such sound way, and I would encourage you to copy from our experience and to make it better, because of course there's a possibility to make it better, and we are in, in improving it, uh, it, it every, everywhere, uh, every year right now. Just for illustration, uh, about this change, we also have uh, this, this uh, 12 principles for streets, which are no less important than, than this. Uh, this is one of the streets, actually by one of these unicorns, by Vinted. Uh, this is how it looked uh, just four years ago, and this is how it looks right now. Some people say that we don't recognize Vilnius anymore in this place, but this is how the developing of the new, uh, new streets is going on. This is another example, about, uh, again, about this open, open air cafe. This is how this nice old uh, city uh, street looked like uh, again several years ago, how it looks right now. About urban, it's, it's, it's more complicated because we have this uh, Soviet, Soviet donation to us. Uh, around half of our citizens, unfortunately, live in this kind of environment, not in this kind of environment. And I do understand that it's not in Central and Eastern Europe only, but also in Western Europe, and ma so many people also live in this kind of environment. Is it possible to change? Yes. Is it easy? No. But it's possible. That's a good, good part of it. You know, one of these things I'm telling to our citizens always, where do you think the density of people is bigger? In this Soviet time or in this one? This is actually two or three years old uh, development, or this one. This one. New one is even more dense. I mean, you have more people in hectare than in the right hand, in the left hand side. How comes? Because the quality of life is completely different. You know, that's actually one of the reasons why I'm always uh, very, very upset about the uh, European Commission talking about new Bauhaus, because it's actually a Bauhaus, Soviet-type Bauhaus, and we want to get rid of it. <laughs> we want to construct this type of the city, and we have examples how our 10 principles and 12 principles for, for, for streets, they do work. Because this is the city people would like to live. And again, uh, when looking to other cities, I would encourage to not to just remind that we had a nice city, but that we are able to create a new city. And this is a very important thing, because this is the same, the same area, by the way, because this is real de-Sovietization of the city. I like this term maybe too much about de-Sovietizing, but I think that people sometimes think that putting down some sculpture is enough. No, it's not to change the whole structure. That's what we need. And this is the structure where people do free, free, feel free. They have lively streets, and they do have cozy yards, and if you buy, pass by the street, you don't even see the yard, because it's for the neighbors, but not for strangers. And the street is for the strangers and for the neighbors as well to, to meet. This is about the city we want to create and we are creating. Just some more examples. I talked about sculptures. This is, this is nice. And of course, we put down this sculpture a long time ago, 35 years ago, I think. But when we had a kind of sandy kind of beach in this, in this place, it was a big debate about the city and what our plazas about. But, but yes, it was a very good education for citizens that plazas is for everything, for joy, for trade, for politics, for religious events, for, for everything. This is, about, this is about the city. Uh, we turned the prison, which was like still the situation four years ago, 
into the concert hall. Now it's a skating uh, place, uh, so you, you are invited to go and, 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 and test if you, if you want. Uh, and I'm going to an end. It's very important to understand that the only place to start with is from yourself. When we went with these 10 principles of architecture, because it, I, as I mentioned, it's both urban and legal innovation. It's, it's very important because if it's just urban, it doesn't work. If it's just legal, it also doesn't work. It has to have a combination. We understood, I asked my chief architect, so, but look, look to our building where we have municipality and central business district. Do we meet this criteria? No. <laughs> so we have, of course, to transform ourselves. And on the left hand side, we have the municipality building, the ground floor of the municipality building, two and a bit years ago. This is from the last year. I mean, do you see some changes? Of course, there are some. You have no curtains anymore. You have nice light bulbs on, 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 on the ground floor as well, but you don't, don't see it from here. You see trees. You see an open atmosphere, inviting atmosphere. And you know, it's, kind of, it's reminding that the building is basically the safe. It is a nice, nice building. But how you treat the connection of building with the streets and the invitation, and this is our municipality, this is what creates the city or kills the city. Before, unfortunately, it was more killing the city than creating the city. Now it's creating the city. You may go through it. It's cafe, it's shops, it's uh, meeting people from interna international people, including from Ukraine. Thousands of people uh, went through, through this for, 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 for integration. So starting from yourself is very important. It's an old slogan, you know, think globally, act locally, or starting from yourself. And uh, uh, the one before last slide, again, we live in a very turbulent times. The good and evil is fighting on the soil of Ukraine unfortunately, on the soil of Ukraine. We have to defend it. And you know, as, as I went to Kiev two days before this big massive attack, I've got a very clear message from, from uh, Vitaly Klitschko. What shall we do? Of course, as a city, we don't have weapons. We have assistance, uh, possibility to assist humanitarianly. But we also have a word in free world. world. When we speak bold, I had an explanation for half a year for all Western media, and for all media free world, you are such a close neighbors of Russia, why are you so bold on this? And my answer was always, we are so close neighbors of Russia for so many years, so that's exactly why we are so bold. I mean, all these things, these are not so important today because everybody in here knows what it's all about. This was done during the first months, just to saying what is important and to saying that we are with you. And it's just slogans. But these are mobilization of support. And I'm so proud being the mayor of the city, which is among the biggest supporters of Ukraine. I just saw that, for example, in providing generators uh, right now, Lithuania is the biggest provider of generators for, 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 for Ukraine. It is, it is so important to, 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 to be fortress of freedom, which means to help others to fight for freedom and to be prosperous and live a happy life. This is very important, both things saving the world from climate change and live happy life. Saving good powers to win against powers of evil and to live a good life in, the, in this. I think this is the biggest, biggest message. And the last slide is, so how to stay young? Be free and allow citizens to be free because this is the spirit. When people are free in the city, they stay young. Be bold, because if you are young, you always know what, where to go and what to do. So that's what young people do and what young cities do. Be creative. Just innovate new things. And of course, the city will be young until it thinks that the good days are ahead of it. Because young people typically do not think that the good, best days are in the childhood. When people get old, they start to think this way. No, no, you have to think that the good days are ahead of you. And plus one more thing, young people typically do not talk about this. They do not like it. They do not like to learn from others, but uh, copying with pride or listening to others and talking is a very important thing as well. So uh, that's about how to be young. Uh, I'm very glad again that I have a possibility to host you here in our beautiful Vilnius. Uh, thank you so much.
<laughs> Give it a moment. I've got a really quick question for you. I actually had about seven or eight questions for you. Yeah, yeah, okay. But we're Go tight on. on time, so I've had to, quick, I've had quick, to, quick, I've quick, had quick, to like quick. condense <laughs> them. So really quick question. We're all here gathering today in Vilnius, um, your city, really to collaborate and connect and network. How do you want to see um, people in the audience make the most out of the time that we've got here today? Uh, you know, one of these recipes for Vilnius is, as we say, we create our own method. The most important element of this method is, uh, is acting not top down, but bottom up. Mm -hmm. When we declare the city is open air cafe, it was not top down approach that, yeah, Yo, you have to do this. You have to change the climate behavior. No, 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 no. It's you who are doing this. Yeah. For us, we just create opportunities. So for us, my task is to have a good venue, a good conference, a good celebration afterwards. Just take out of it whatever you need. I will not give recipes. That's a good recipe. No. <laughs> Well, the recipe is you've got all the ingredients, make your own mix. <laughs> you know, it's kind of yeah, like when you, you go you to may those... Say, you may say so. Or, yeah. what, or whatever other mix you like. Or whatever, whatever <laughs> mix you want. Throw the flavors together. Thank you so much you. for joining us. Thank you.